Greetings, moviegoers of the multiverse. It is I, your host, Jacob Rewind, and welcome to the fifth episode of My Tickets, Your Tickets. Five episodes. We made it through four episodes without missing an upload. For someone who's just starting their podcast, that's pretty good. Yes, if you haven't already noticed, this episode did not come out on Sunday as it was intended to, but... I actually have the, um, I'm able to blame God for that because it has been snowing like crazy and below 20 degrees in Calgary where I live currently and it's just been cold as heck so getting to the theater was a challenge. Even though I live a 10 minute walk away from the theaters, getting to the theaters was a challenge for this episode and also getting through the movies were a challenge in this episode because I saw yes I did see Avatar the Way of Water which is a three hour movie I can't stress that enough it is three hours of my life three of my limited life hours were spent on Avatar The Way of Water and I am here to talk about that movie and two more to hopefully save you the price of admission for two movies so that you just see the one that you'll like the most. That's my goal. My goal in this podcast is to get you into the theater more and get you enjoying the theater more. That is my goal. I spend my money and my time on these movies so that you don't have to or that you know you should. Because when I get really excited about a movie, I hope you know, I hope that that's a seal of approval that earns some respect. I hope that one day me saying whether or not I like a movie means something to someone. And me saying you have to see this movie makes someone go, I have to see this movie. So let's get into some movies that I do not think you have to see. (laughs) Um, It was a good week this week. Uh, Not one of the best, but not one of the worst either at all. It was three fine films. The three films I saw were Avatar, The Way of Water, uh, the f- Steven Spielberg. Steven. Hey, 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 guys, it's me, Steven Spielberg. Oh my God, Steven Spielberg! I can't believe you're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of time in my schedule. I decided to. Yeah, yeah. I decided to come on down, stop by your podcast, and uh, you, you're doing a great job, Jacob. You're doing a great job. Yeah, and you know what? You're doing a great job on the Always Sunny in Philadelphia podcast too. <laughs> Oh, oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Because uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes you get in your own head and you start thinking about, you know, like, oh, am I really doing a good job? That kind of like imposter syndrome thing. But yeah, thank you so much. Okay, bye. I'm going to go. All right. Bye, Steven Spielberg. The windows are closed and the doors are locked. I have no clue how Steven Spielberg entered the premises of my house. Anyways, the third movie I saw was Spoiler Alert. Avatar 2, The Way of Water, The Fablemans, and Spoiler Alert. And let's get right into it with Avatar. Don't see the movie. 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 If you've seen a movie, you've probably seen this movie. This movie does not do a lot that is very new, interesting, or exciting other than look brilliant. And tons of movies look brilliant. I just saw... If you if you are going to the movie purely for a visual experience, go watch Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. It is a beautiful stop-motion animation piece of artwork. This just looks like a computer made it out. This looks like... The movie looks like a computer screensaver with some action moments. It's a three-hour movie, and I can't stress that enough, with, I would say, the movie had three moments that I would classify as epic. That's one epic moment per hour. And I've already forgotten what one of the epic moments are, so there's one epic moment and two memorable moments, and that's just not enough 
It's not enough for the for for three hours and for fifteen dollars. I did not get my money's worth out of this movie. I did not see it in IMAX or in 3D. I saw it in standard definition, and I think that yeah, if you want to go see this movie in IMAX, then go ahead, go do it. But understand that there's no depth there. It's just it's the way of water is easy to see. When the, way, when the water you are watching is shallow as a pond. There's a fun game you can play while watching this movie. They are underwater a great deal. The Navi spend a great deal of time underwater in this movie. And a fun game you can play is every time they're underwater, you can hold your breath and see how long you last and if you could last as long as they do underwater. And that's another testament to how not enjoyable this movie was. I was trying to come up with fun games to play in the theater rather than watching the movie. This movie repeats itself like crazy. The opening is the bad guy gets the good guy's kids and the good guy has to get him back. And the ending, do you want to guess what the ending is? Close your ears because spoiler alert, here's what the ending is. The ending is he gets the bad guy gets the good guy's kids and the good guy gets him back. That's it. It just repeats itself. It just keeps repeating itself. And in the ending, he gets the kids back and the bad guy gets more different kids. Like, it's so repetitive. Ugh. It just frustrates me. It really, really frustrates me. Because I looked at some reviews and all of them were five stars. Like, oh, never doubt James Cameron. Don't doubt James Cameron for a second. James Cameron, a true visionary. And it's like, of what? <laughs> There's nothing there. There's no meat on that bone. There's just some cool looking fish. And if you want a cool looking sci-fi e world, just go see Strange World. I would say that these two those two movies are on about the same level of quality. Enjoyability? I enjoyed Strange World a lot more, but that's a personal preference. The personal preference of mine is animation looking like cartoony animation. I know that that's not everybody's preference, but if you like your movies the way I like my movies, go watch Strange World instead of Avatar The Way of Water. One and a half stars for Avatar The Way of Water. One and a half stars. It was at two stars, but I started really thinking about it. Like it's been a few days since I watched the movie and something has been burrowing in my head that I might talk about in a later episode because I don't want to get too spoilery here. Um, because it specifically pertains to the ending. And I might do a special episode where I recap a couple different movies that I want to highlight. Because I, mm, I kind of want to watch Bones and All again, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. And The Menu. And Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Anyways, um, so I'm not going to get into that here. I'm going to give Avatar The Way of Water one and a half stars. It's down from two because I hated the ending. And I'm going to move on to talking about The Fablemans. The Fablemans... First point in the um, movie's favor, it just gets one free star right off the bat. Music by John Williams. Some fantastic music is in this movie. Some fantastic scoring and some fantastic music. Uh, the movie is about... Oh, I didn't even say what Avatar The Way of Water is about. Because guess what? It's about nothing! Um, the Fablemans is about a young kid who wants to make movies. And he's got a little bit of a dysfunctional nuclear family going on. And it's really awesome because as an artist, I like art about making art. It's kind of meta, but that's kind of my thing. But the, the, the complexity of the family in the movie gives the movie a lot of depth, which is really nice. I loved the main character, Sam Fableman. It was incredibly easy to see myself in Sam Fableman. <laughs> it was incredibly, incredibly easy. The movie really captures, does a great job of capturing imagination and wonder. There's a lot of scenes of him shooting his movie, and it takes place in, like, 
the 60s i don't know years good but it takes place in the past so he's using old techniques like he's got his um camera on a little cart and he wheels the cart across these two rails he's made out of wood it's very very satisfying to watch i really liked it um something i would like to say about also applies to avatar the way of water could have been gayer could have been a little bit gayer if you ask me Uh, but that's just me avatar the way of water should have been gayer full stop period at the end of the sentence like there's something different you could do you had a basic love story b story there so the least you could have done is make it gay and then tons of people would be talking about that like that's how to do something different but no they didn't do that um so avatar way water should have been gayer uh the fablemans could have been gayer there was like some subtle undertones or maybe i was reading into it the wrong way but there's this interesting moment between two between sam fableman and one of his bullies that kind of hints at a little bit of maybe queerness going on it was very enjoyable to me it was very nice and we'll get to spoiler alert because spoiler alert spoiler alert was very gay and also very fantastic I dropped my phone on the mouse pad, (laughs) and it stopped the recording for a second. Okay, Uh, what else did I want to say about the Fablemans? It's about art, it's about family. There was some really good laughs. The people behind me in the theater were really laughing at, like, all the jokes. Like, there were a couple moments where I wasn't laughing, but there were a lot of moments where the people behind me were just loving it, and I kind of understand why. This is a movie that makes me want to make my movie. It's a movie about how art lets you find a little bit of control in this crazy, chaotic world that we live in that you can't control, even with art. So that's all I have to say about The Fablemans, and I've got one more thing to say about Avatar The Way of Water. That's right, you're not out of the you're not out of the woods yet, Avatar. Instead of watching Avatar The Way of Water, you could watch 8 episodes of avatar the last airbender how's that for a review you could watch eight episodes of avatar the last airbender you could get into season one of the show in the time it takes you to watch this one movie think about that three stars for the fablemans And it's a tie between The Fablemans and Spoiler Alert because Spoiler Alert also got three stars. The movie was very cute and very gay and very sad at the ending and based on a true story, which makes it even more sad. So spoiler alert for spoiler alert, but not much of a spoiler alert because spoiler alert, spoiler alert starts with a spoiler alert. The main character's love interest dies at the end from cancer. That's what this movie's about. It's about falling in love with someone and being in a relationship and then that relationship being ripped apart by this horrible illness. It was cra- it wasn't crazy, but it was it was it was very intimate. T- comparing it to Bros, reaching all the way back to the first episode of my podcast, comparing it to Bros, it's similar, but it's a lot quieter. Bros is a lot louder and a lot flashier. This movie is a lot quieter and more reserved. Both are gay. And also both are traits of gays, being standoffish or being very loud and brash and bold. Like, this is an... Gay. Gay brain. Jacob has gay brain. Um, I'd say they're both on the same level of quality. The movie was very, very, very very close to getting some tears out of me at the ending it was super close to getting some tears out um out of me at the ending even though it was spoiled um because they do this this thing they use this thing that i'm not gonna say because then it would ruin the ending and it uh is definitely gonna stick with me for sure Just like The Fablemans had an ending that's going to stick with me for sure. Both of these movies had great endings. Um, 
very short credits on spoiler alert. I've been sitting, I've been going to a lot of movies and sitting through their credits and the credits are, the credits on spoiler alert were very short. It did not take a huge list of people to make this movie. Um, what else do I want to say about spoiler alert? If, if, if this is your kind of movie, go see this movie 100%. Like if you like a drama romance, go see spoiler alert it'll be it'll it'll knock you dead it's it's fantastic that way um and if you want a cute movie about family and coming of age go see the fablemans but if you had to pick one if you needed to pick one which is what i have to do right now if you had one ticket Ooh, this one's a toughie. This one's a toughie, folks. Like, this is this is like when it came down to uh, Pinocchio and the menu. This is a real toughie for me, I gotta say. Oh, jeez. Um, because The Fablemans has art, Steven Spielberg, movie making, which I love. Spoiler alert, has a romantic plot based on a true story, uh, gay, which I like. It's real tough. If you had one ticket, I would go see The Fablemans. I think The Fablemans was also very good. I think that the family, unless you want to get your heart broken, then go see Spoiler Alert, you sick, sick freak. <laughs> but I get it, because um, feeling things again is good. Y'all notice that? Y'all notice that for a while? Uh, you just wouldn't feel anything, and now you're starting to feel things again? Anybody else notice that? Just me? No? Okay. Anyways, um, that is all for this episode of My Tickets, Your Ticket. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you enjoy The Fablemans if you go to see it. Or if you go to see Spoiler Alert, I hope you enjoy that. Um, if you like the episode, feel free to tell me about it on Twitter. I'm Jacob Rewind on Twitter. I know Twitter is burning down right now, but I would just love to connect with anybody who's listening to this show. If anybody is listening to this show, um, I'd love to connect with you and hear what you think I could be doing better and hear what you enjoy. Um, what else have I got to say? I may be taking the next, uh, two weeks from now on Sunday, I, there may not be a new episode because I am moving to Vancouver. Oh yeah, Jacob's going to the kinda big city. <laughs> so that should be very exciting and I might be getting myself set up so I'm not sure if I will be equipped or have the time to record a new episode yet but I'm going to play it by ear and see what happens. I'm also thinking about maybe doing a special episode of reviewing ev re-reviewing every movie I've reviewed and just seeing what's stuck with me, what hasn't and if I want to change any of my tickets. Um but other than that, go watch Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio on Netflix. It's really good. <laughs> um, I think that's everything I've got to say. Um, please remember to be kind and rewind, and I'll catch you next time.